ಅಂಶಕಲ್ಪತರೂಪ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯ ಪತಿ ಭಾವನಿಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭೂ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧಾರ ಶಿವಾಸಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ I was raised in the 1960s in America. At that time, in my heart, there were serious questions that I felt I had to address in life. Why is there hatred? Why is there cruelty? Why is there war? Why is there so much selfishness and greed? At the beginning, I... participated in the civil rights movement demonstrations but i came to the conclusion that real solutions have to be found within one's own self i wanted to know god i wanted to understand how i could love god how i could be an instrument of compassion of god's love in my life Well, myself and my friend Gary we traveled to different places to see different points of view and to study different types of life and gradually there was a calling in my heart that led me deeper deeper into a spiritual search on an island in Greece on a mountain top I left my friend Gary and alone began to hitchhike from Greece to India. I think it's a truth of life that if a person really sincerely focuses on a goal with an open heart, then magical things transform around us. And I believe that that magic is the grace of God. who can empower protect and nourish us to overcome all obstacles and find the great treasure within our own hearts I was 19 years old when I arrived at the border of India those years of traveling I met with the Dalai Lama of Tibet Mother Teresa in the ghettos of Calcutta and many many more some famous some unknown they had all given me such precious gifts I'm trying but I do not feel that I could ever come close to repaying the great gifts my guru and the saintly people of india and the country of india had given to me over the years i've tried to do good for the people of india and today we're feeding about 260,000 children in the slum schools every day started Bhakti Vedanta Hospital and the purpose of the hospital is to heal the body the mind and the soul because every living being is a child of God you cannot love God and not love every living being it is the essence of Hindu it is the essence of Islam it is the essence of Judaism it is the essence of Christianity It is the essence of Buddhism and is the essence of all great spiritual paths according to my discovery. And the spiritual path is our journey home. If in any small way the journey home can help anyone to ask the question, what is really the most fulfilling purpose of life? Then I will consider that 
my service has some merit. Timidandasya Gyanan Janachalakaya Chakshurun Militam Jenatas Maisri Kurve Namaha. I am very grateful to be with all of you this afternoon. Thank you so much for coming. I was requested to speak on the subject of yoga and the ecology. I'd like to tell you a story. Several years ago, I was sitting in the New Delhi airport waiting for a flight, and I was introduced to the government minister for the environment and forestry, who was passionately on a campaign, and a good one, after exchanging some greetings, she very strongly challenged me. She said, what are you yogis and swamis doing for the environment? The rivers are polluted, the air is polluted, the earth is polluted, creating a crisis for all humanity and all living beings. What is all your asanas and your meditation and your chanting doing to solve this problem. I was very impressed by her passion for her work. And I replied that what you're doing is wonderful, but besides dealing with the symptoms of problems, it's very important that we treat the root cause of a problem. Just like if we have boils on our body, we deal with the symptoms by putting compresses and ointment, but we have to go to the root if we really want to solve the problem. That's a disease in the blood. The pollutions of this world are simply symptoms of the pollution of the ecology in the hearts of human beings. And if we don't deal with that, then even if you clean every river and every ocean and the sky and the land, we'll just pollute it again and again and again. It is toxic greed that is polluting the ecology of our hearts. Yoga is the science of cleaning the ecology of the heart and tasting the joy of living in harmony with God, with nature, and with all living beings. So let us work together for the sake of service to all. She was very happy. And she said, yes, let us work together. At this time in the Gulf of Mexico, there's a great crisis. Oil is spewing out from the bottom of the ocean one mile deep. And they say that this is the problem, that it's so far down. But actually, the problem is much deeper than one mile. It is the whole of ignorance within the hearts of human beings. And from that ignorance is spewing out egoism, selfish passion, and greed. And it's creating toxic problems all over the world. Yoga is meant to heal that hole of ignorance in our heart and access our true essence, the Atma, the eternal soul, which is Satchit Ananda, eternal, full of knowledge and full of bliss, to access the love that is dormant within our hearts 
and be instruments of that love. There's a beautiful verse in the Vedas, Sarve Bhavantu Sukhena. It means let all beings be happy. Not just people of our race or our sex or our nationality or our species, but all beings. There's a beautiful verse in Bhagavad Gita which really culminates what are the symptoms of a true yogi? Vidyavanaya sampane brahmani gavihastini suni chaiva swapaki cha pandita samadarshana. Real wisdom is to see the equality of every living being. Whether one is man or woman or black or white or red or yellow, or whether if one is from one nation or another, or whether one is a human or an elephant or a cow or an insect. When we access and realize the love of the divine that is within our own heart, mamaivam so jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana, we can see a speck of that divinity, a part of God in every living being. You cannot love God and not love everyone and everything because that is the essence. There's a beautiful Sanskrit verse which describes that yoga means to be one who is always seeking the essence, saragrahi, the essence within ourself and the essence within all living beings. Yes, there are so many problems in this world, but it begins with solving the problems of reconnecting ourselves with our own source and accessing the love that is there. From the perspective of yoga, being sensitive to the environment is sacred. It's an integral part of our path because Mother Earth is the feminine aspect of God or the Supreme who is nourishing us like our own mother with air, with water, with food. She's given us our bodies, our minds and everything we have to be grateful, to reciprocate with the love of God that is coming through nature. This is the principle of bhakti yoga, to reciprocate with that love. To go deeper and deeper within our own hearts to access that love is the purpose. The purpose of human life. The Vedic scriptures teach us the principle of unity in diversity. Rather than wanting people and things to be like us, to, be, to respect and honor our differences, our differences in race, our differences in personalities, our differences in religion, and see the internal unity that we all have. through meditation, through chanting the names of God and mantras, through performing asanas, pranayama, it's all ultimately meant to bring us to this realization of being instruments of peace, instruments of love, when we discover it within ourselves. There's a beautiful verse in Ishopanishad. Ishavasyamidam saravam yatkincha jagatyam jagat. Which means everything that exists is the property of the Lord. We are not proprietors, we are only caretakers. We should always be conscious and grateful for what we have. And not to exploit our mother, the earth and the environment, nor to exploit any other living beings but utilize everything we have in a spirit of seva, a 
or service. This deep-rooted inclination of exploitation to want to be the controller, the proprietor, and the enjoyer is the root cause of hatred, envy, economic problems, war, and the ecological disasters that are coming upon us. Jaito Dharapana Marajanam. Yoga is the cleansing of the heart. Ultimately, everyone is looking for fulfillment. And the essence of fulfillment is that of love. Everyone has this need to love and to be loved. When we find that fulfillment, we don't need things to be happy. But without that fulfillment, we search for it. We search for what is within through so many situations outside of ourselves. But nothing can replace the calling of the heart, the calling to be reunited with the Supreme. And yoga is the process of bringing about that reunion. So it is the greatest need in the world for people to look within and discover the true treasure of happiness that is within us all and to share that happiness with all living beings. Thank you very much. Would anyone like to ask any questions? How can India be the very source of yoga, and yet it's probably one of the most polluted countries in the world? How do you account for that paradox? Yoga is universal. It is not limited to India. The word religion means to, to bind back to our source, and the word yoga means to reunite with our source. The same principle. These are universal principles. But in reply to your question of all the pollutions of India, I have some realizations because I live in Mumbai which has about 15 million people and even more rats. And it's extremely polluted. It's because in the passion to tr try to fulfillment, try to find fulfillment outside of our own selves, India has forgotten to a large extent its own heritage. and the beauty of that heritage. Ultimately, the absolute truth or God is the source of all beauty, all charm, and all sweetness. And to reconnect with that is where we find our real happiness. Because there is a recession of human values, it's, being a, it's bringing about so much mental depression and unholy competition. Mahatma Gandhi said that this world, Mother Earth, she, can, she could supply everything for everyone, but she cannot supply for the few greedy people. who demand it. Greed can never be satisfied. The more it gets, the more it needs. It is the cause of envy, breaking families, hard-heartedness, and distraction from our own purpose. Yoga teaches us how to live with character. 
Character means to be willing to make personal sacrifices for a higher cause. To be willing to live by our ideals, even in the face of temptation or fear. And ultimately, to be instruments of compassion. The only shortage there is in this world is compassion. Paradukha Dukhi. A true yogi is one who sees the sufferings of others as their own suffering and the happiness of others to be their own happiness. Because one transcends the ego. Enechi asadi maya nashi bodolagi. This chanting of this beautiful sweet mantras is medicine to clean the heart of the pollutions. And instead of being a cause of a problem, to be a cause of real solutions and instruments of the love and the peace that is within us all. I'm so grateful to have had this chance to speak these few words with you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you.